¿no? <risa> Uh, Mr. Master of Ceremonies, uh, President Ramaphosa Limme, Honored Premier Ma David Makura, and Honored Members of Parliament here present, MECs, and members of our provincial legislature, representatives of our various business and community organizations, distinguished guests, and members of the bereaved Maponya family. As a long friend and colleague of the late Dr. Richard Maponya, whom I have known and worked with for just over 65 years. I feel very deeply touched. I feel very deeply touched to have unexpectedly, unexpectedly lost him at a time when, despite our age, we were still seriously engaged in some important discussions concerning the future development of our country's economy, as well as the crucial role which black people ought to be playing therein. None of us anticipated that death would come so soon. In fact, I was, because of his comparatively better looking health appearance, not anticipating him to be depart before me. In him, Dr. Maponya, our country has lost one of the most outstanding black business pioneers and leader who I wish to describe as the best role model and graduate of the School of Hard Knocks. He was essentially a self-made man who, like most of our earlier black pioneers, did not have the rare privilege nor the means to enter a business school to acquire business qualifications. He acquired most of his exceptionally skillful performance as an entrepreneur par excellence through interest and his passionate desire to learn and to want to become a noteworthy person in the world of business. When I first met Mr. Maponya, Dr. Maponya at Dube in 1954, he had already started a small dairy in Dube, near where I stayed. Later, we met as members of the Johannesburg African Chamber of Commerce and became more closely acquainted. Mr. Masekela, Big Vai Masekela, uh, he was the uncle to Hugh, and I were directors of a company called the Bumper Syndicate, at which which was also a member of the Orlando Cottage Association, an organization which was specially brought into being to enable black truck owners in Soweto to participate as cottage contractors in the building of Soweto townships at the time. Black business organizations in South Africa started forming during the 1950s, and among these was the Johannesburg African Chamber of Commerce, called JACOC in short, 
formed in 1955, which drew its membership from all black townships in the Witwatersrand area. Dr. Maponya became chairman of Jakok, and nine years later, under his leadership, Jakok took the initiative to establish a national black business organization whose main purpose and objective would be to unify all the small fledgling organizations into a strong body that could enable them to act and speak with one loud voice against the oppressive and racially discriminatory laws and regulations promulgated under the Natives Urban Areas Act of 1923 to suppress, limit, and obstruct black participation in the country's economy, more especially in the urban areas which were called white areas during the apartheid time. In 1964, the first National Black Business Conference was held at the Orlando East Donaldson Community Center to launch a black business organization that was called the National African Chamber of Commerce, or NACOC in short. Dr. Maponya was elected at that conference to serve as the first president of NACOC, which is today called NAFCOC, and he held that position for two years. It is very important to shed some light on the critical issues that were uppermost in the minds of the black businessmen, pioneers who met at the Orlando East uh, Community Hall to create NAFCOC, which is today NAFCOC. NAFCOC came due to the development in the early 1970s that compelled the organization to reorganize into geographic regions instead of splitting the chamber into ethnic formations as was proposed by the apartheid government, which was strongly opposed and resisted by NACOC. The majority of the business people present at the conference complained about the problem that white financial institutions did not provide them with funds to develop their businesses. Finally, it was resolved and agreed that the answer to this problem was that black people should create their own bank. The outcome of the debate at NAFCOC's first conference resulted in the beginning of the effort to establish the African Bank, which you all know of today. The African Bank, after very long years, 10 years, it took 10 years to raise a million rand among black people to register the, the bank, and this was registered in 1975. There was also considerable debate and interchange of views on how black business people should be made more attractive so as to acquire more support from their own black clients in our townships. Now, apart from discussing at great length about the legal obstacles to black growth, economic growth in the townships, some attention was also focused on those things which we could do ourselves despite and notwithstanding the handicaps we faced. It was agreed that NAFCOC members should explore possibilities of working more closely together 
than against each other by forming companies wherever that was possible. In the long term, progress was made. NAFCOC initiated companies. Most of you who live in Soweto will know that we registered Black Chain in 1976 at the Baraguana Hospital there. We also, in 1977, established the African Development and Construction Company, a company which built many of the houses in uh, Guatemala as well as in the Free State in Velko. We also created the Masekela Mavimbela Scholarship Fund, which sent more than 300 students to university. In, and that was done in 1966. Then later, we also had a magazine that was started. I started that magazine as, a, as the editor of African Business. Uh, and that magazine was called the African Chamber of Commerce Review. And finally, we were happy that NAFCOC acted as a creative organ of the black people to develop the economy in our country. Now, the greatest contribution that was made uh, was achieved during the first 30 years of the organization's existence, when there were no internal conflicts and factions causing rifts within NAFCO. It is indeed very true that all organizations which thrive and prosper, do so only if and when peace and harmony prevail within their structures. In, in this regard, I personally deeply, I'm de personally deeply distressed that NAFCOC, the organization for which Dr. Maponya and his compatriots worked so hard to establish, after 55 years, is still battling to create unity, peace, and stability within its ranks. This is a disappointment. The members of NAFCOC in those years were not paid to do the work they did. They were sacrificing to build a better tomorrow for our people in the country. And this is the spirit which is gradually diminishing in the black community, the spirit of sacrifice and nation building. And that is something that has to be revived very strongly. I appeal to those people who are members of the business community to seize the responsibility to help build the nation. And if they don't do that, we will stay in poverty for a long, long time to come. The grim socioeconomic problems and challenges facing our country at present, such as low economic growth, high unemployment, poverty, inequality, shall never success be successfully addressed if potential, potentially powerful organizations like NAFCOC remain weak, divided, and inactive for whatever reason. The most important issue on which I and the late Dr. Maponya were fully in accord was that the unity of NAFCOC must be expedited and restored to ensure that the organization operates as effectively as it did in its early days.
The critical problem that needs to be resolved urgently appears to lie in the realm of leadership of NAFCO. What should reasonably help to bring an end to the enduring conflict within NAFCO is the convening of a national conference at which all existing factions and of the organizations are allowed to participate and where a new executive with strong ethical background is elected and, re and a revised constitution is adopted as a unifying instrument. Personally, I will also appreciate if the government could contribute towards ensuring that NAFCOC remains, attains the unity and effectiveness it once possessed for the enhancement of black business development in our country. We need that NAFCOC, a strong NAFCOC, not a weak NAFCOC, not a divided NAFCOC, and the government should really see that as part of its responsibility to unite bodies that can make a contribution to the development of the country. <clears throat> Dr. Maponya's interests do not only lie in the urban areas. Dr. Maponya in Winterfeld, where I, I live, uh, and Winterfeld being a rural area, went there to build a home. A few years ago, he built a home in Winterfeld. He was more interested in helping the farming community to be trained and funded to enable them to make the best of their agricultural holdings. Now, during the past year, Dr. Maponya organized the young and old people in Winterfeld to encourage them to establish viable agricultural projects on their plots. In this regard, he ins instituted negotiations with the Department of Rural Development, Land Reform, as well as the Land Bank uh, to assist black farmers in Winterfeld with training and funding for their projects. He worked with a committee of young people and myself to establish four agricultural cooperatives in Winterfeld, which are anxiously awaiting assistance from the government. The late Dr. Maponya would have done much more for Winterfeld if he had been spared to continue living in that place. All of us are deeply thankful to late Dr. Morponya for his illustrious contribution to the upliftment of our people and country. His presence will be sorely missed, particularly at this time when South Africa seriously stands in need of men of his caliber with limitless foresight and dedication. I wish at this stage, in conclusion, to convey my profound and sincere sympathy to all the children and relatives of my dear friend and brother, Richard. May his soul rest in peace. Dr. Mutanani, thank you very much. And I don't think that I would be remiss in uh, asking that we gathered here acknowledge and also express our